A headache is simply when the head aches. That's why, that's why it's called that way. Now, a migraine is actually a little bit different. And that's when the pain is usually more severe, and the pain can even be brought on in the whole nasal area, the eyes, the mouth, and usually affects just one side of the head, not the whole region. Now, with a migraine, doing any type of physical exercise, like even walking, could intensify the pain. With a headache, that usually is not the case. Migraines actually usually last longer, while headaches just kind of come and go. So in a nutshell, a headache is really just a less severe version of a migraine. Now, one way you can reduce your chance of a migraine is actually increasing the amount of blood going to your brain. And you can do this by exercising. In a study done by University of uh, Gothenburg in Sweden, some migraine patients used prescription drugs, and another group just did exercise. And after about, so I think it was like three months, that after three months, both groups had a, a similar reduction in the, the amount of migraine attack episodes that they experienced. But the group that just did physical exercise with no prescription drugs did not receive all the side effects of those drugs, which were pretty bad. Another idea that can really help reduce your whole chance of getting a migraine would be, would be by taking something called CoQ10 or coenzyme Q10. And what it does is it has a job of giving muscles ATP, which is like energy, similar to uh, giving fuel to your, your car so they can move. Now how it helps is by making the heart <clears throat> push more blood, which gives more blood to various organs throughout your whole body, including your brain. And of course, that definitely helps with reducing the chance of heart disease, which is like a huge killer. In one study, 32 patients with frequent migraines were given a supplement with CoQ10. 61% of them reduced their whole migraine pain episodes that they experienced by at least half. Only two people showed no improvement by using CoQ10, so that's, that's really good. Also, a vitamin known as magnesium can really help too. There's evidence that people who have, who have migraines actually have low levels of, of this uh, substance. And as well, it can actually help prevent it as well. Next up, something called omega-3 fatty acids, which are like insanely good. You should be consuming a lot of this stuff. Uh, these little guys, these little fats, help a person's health more so than giving a dehydrated person in the middle of the desert a bottle of water. Okay, <laughs> maybe that example is a little far-fetched, but the, the point is that they, they really help a lot. I highly recommend a, a, actually a supplement because uh, you can get it through fish, but uh, a lot of the fish we, the, out there has something called mercury and toxins, which is not really good. Now the way that omega-3 helps with migraines is this anti-inflammatory ability. So when there's a problem in the brain, the body helps by inflaming the area. Uh, this is why a pimple's red. This is why you get swelling with like a sprained ankle. It even is the chief cause of pain with arthritis. Now a three month study in Sweden found that taking omega-3 gave participants around 30% reduction in the intensity of pain with, with migraine attacks. and also provided around 30% reduction in the occurrence of a migraine. So these are some great, great ideas for you. Now before you go out and start buying all these dietary supplements, it's really important to know a few things. For starters, in many countries, dietary supplements are not really regulated. This means that government agencies don't really ensure that the supplements are safe before they're sold. In the United States, from 2007 to 2012, there were more than 6,000 reports of some serious adverse effects of people taking dietary supplements. Now, to make things a little bit easier for you and a little bit safer, I've actually sat down and created a guide that can, I feel can really help somebody in the whole process of going out there and choosing and buying these dietary supplements. And it's going to highlight some of the uh, what to look for when purchasing a brand, like how to identify one that's hazardous and, and has, well, it's a high risk one, and how to identify one that's a good choice. Of course, it goes over to cover some herbal remedies or herbal products out there, it goes over that what to take for certain medical conditions, and even 
how the goal, what the role of, of government agencies are towards us, which is really interesting. Now, you, might be, you might be wondering how much this guy is going to cost, but the great news is I did make it completely free. So you have no reason not to at least take a glance at it. And to view this guide, all you got to do is simply click on the link right below the video here. I hope uh, this video helped a few people out there. Thank you so much for your time. Have a great rest of your day.